All right, the DXY zoomed out on the weekly chart, going all the way back to 2020 here, when the last time the Gaussian channel on the weekly turned red, right? That signals bear market for the US dollar, right? This is what we're tracking. Uh, turned red again uh, this early, early mid-June here, right? So that's what we're looking at. Uh, so far, so good. Downtrend, right? Lower highs, lower lows. That's what we see. So let's zoom in here and see what we can... Uh, look forward to now if this looks different it's because we have it on closing prices here's our traditional candles here the easiest way to draw trend lines and support resistance is by putting it on closing prices so oftentimes you can uh you know fact check uh those of you that are you know subjectively you know drawing maybe your other favorite youtubers uh draw random lines on charts right uh the the most accurate way to do it is this way right trend line closing prices and then you can go back to your candles, right? So that is the most accurate and the most concrete way to do it. And the least subjective, that's the most important, right? Because trend lines and, you know, squiggly lines on charts can all be subjectively drawn. And it's kind of, uh, what is my narrative? I'm going to show you that, right? This, this kind of eliminates the narrative, right? By putting it on closing price, it's hard to argue with that, right? Two touch points here on the lows, that's the troughs. Uh, multiple touch points too as well on the peaks. Peaks and troughs, that's what you're looking at in a channel. So if we go up any higher, we would need to kind of reverse around the one, just above 103. You could see, um, you know, previously that's, you know, that it, once you have two touch points, that is where your first time you can have a trend line. Two touch points is the minimum. If you have 20 touch points, that's a much stronger line. Uh, two touch points, that's the bare minimum, and that's what we have so far. So uh, don't read any more into it than that. Two touch points, basically just barely there. All right, so if we move up any higher for the DXY, we need it to drop, right? If, it, if that happens, usually uh, that is the, the, you know, the start of, of bear markets are often the start of bull markets for, you know, crypto. It could take a while, right? You can notice the time frame here. When did crypto start doing well? Uh, right at the end of, of uh, you know, the, at the end of 2022, right? As the DXY is really dropping hard, right? Um, that's, that's, and then, you know, the vice versa on that, right? Think back to our last crypto peak, the late 2021, right? That is, it's not the actual start of the trend, but it's once it's kind of validated. Look at the Gaussian channel turn green, right? It, it's over, right? Same thing will happen next time. Once this turns green, uh, we'll often have a rally earlier, but if you turn green on the five day or the weekly, uh, for this index, whenever that is 2024, 2025, uh, you, you start taking profits if you haven't already, right? Um, so the DXY, we need to maintain this down uh, falling channel here. And we need to take out this 200 week EMA, which is what we got a reversal on previously in July. We had a tweezer bottom, right? off. We made a video right after this happened. Uh, likely you're going to get a bounce out of this. This is pretty strong. Off of major support and a tweezer bottom very likely to go back to the upside so yeah the dxy back alive or some back from the dead i think the title of that video was um and we need to you know reverse again right around 103 it's near but we could have a little bit more to go uh perfect scenario for crypto and 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 uh the stock market is if we just do you know keep following this pattern right so um that's that's what we're looking to do or you know you know put in a lower something like this where you come down and you bounce or take this out right that would be ideal or you did something like this is would be the ideal scenario for crypto and the stock market um is if you you can turn you know these support lines into resistance right you see how we break that or you know unfortunately uh for the bad sign right you always want to look at both sides and not just you know look at your bullish or bearish narrative is you know we could do this as well Right, this would be this would be bad, right? This would be crossing the streams bad uh, if we did something like that. But until you get back above your median line on your Gaussian channel, you're not going to be too bullish. Um, so you know maybe we could you know end up doing something like that, right? This is kind of all uh, loosely subjective, but want to give you every possible scenario to look for, right? We could be doing that and going into you know later in this year we get kind of this fake out, maybe a double top area. 
right below the Gaussian. So if even if we break through here, not all hope is lost, but this would likely cause crypto and the stock markets to fall either further or just delay and, you know, side more sideways action. So uh, one of these scenarios, we'll keep a close eye on it tracking, but, you know, this weekly candle uh, bullish, no doubt. Uh, which is why, you know, um, you know, crypto has been kind of just hanging out in the stock market as well, right? The stock market's going to struggle against the U.S. dollar if it's rallying like it is this week so far. Um, so that will wrap it up here. Hopefully you liked the video. Thumbs up if you haven't already. Um, subscribe to Patreon and Telegram for more content. I'll see you there. Car of the day. Let's get to that. Uh, it is the Mercedes AMG GT in the satin paint. Quarter of the day. When one must, one can, right? If you have no choice, you'll find a way. Uh, Altcoin index, 29, moving up slightly, but we're still in a kind of this, uh, in, you know, in limbo here, right? We're no longer in Bitcoin season, but we're, we're, we need to put in a higher high and then altcoins can rally. But before that, I think Bitcoin's going to need to show it's got a little bit of strength to get back above 30K or so. And I think altcoins can start doing well again. Fear and Greed Index, we're at 54, uh, slightly up from yesterday, but, uh, you know, we've basically just been trending sideways. We need a break higher. Uh, 54 seems to be kind of a resistance area, 54, 55. If we see a move to, say, you know, 50, 60, then, you know, we haven't seen that in a while, right? That would likely lead to more upside, right? Support resistance works on any chart. Just, uh, you know, look at a line and you can get some data. All right, so I'll leave it there. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Go check out my Bitcoin video if you haven't seen that yet. Um, Fractal from 2016, potentially playing out on that one. Uh, we'll see if that it holds true for Bitcoin, right? We're looking at kind of a late Q4 breakout rally uh, if we're rhyming with 2016. So um, go check that out when you get a chance. And I'll see you on the next one. And I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>